Hello everyone. So as you can see in the title of this video, it does say re-uploaded and that's because about a week ago I uploaded the original Tony Lopez and Andres Lopez video, but unfortunately there were a lot of things that I said in that video that was false. I mostly got all of my information from various articles and other people's videos and the thing with those is that it kind of just becomes a game of telephone. What is said from the source but then said again tens of times isn't always going to be the same exact story and so with that that is exactly what happened a few of the victims had come forward to me and told me the correct information so I immediately took the video down to prevent from anyone hearing this false information to reach out to as many victims as I could. Uh, a lot of the victims are underage and do go by aliases to prevent their name from being slandered in this situation because the Andreas and Tony Lopez uh, fan base is victim blaming and harassing these people which is extremely disgusting and gross especially because of the actions that Andreas and Tony had done to them just innocent young people. It's absolutely terrible and that is exactly what I try to do with these videos. I try to spread awareness and ensure that every victim's story is heard and heard correctly and so that is exactly what I'm doing in this video. I'm re-uploading but with all of the correct information so you guys know exactly what happened and if there is anyone watching this video that I mention in this video that I got your story wrong or I got an incorrect source then please 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 DM me. This is my Instagram. Instagram and just tell me exactly what happened and what I got wrong and I will leave it in the pinned comment of this video. With that being said, check the pinned comment of this video before watching to ensure that there is no extra evidence that I did not include or that I got incorrect within this video. So with that being said, Here's the video. Andreas is actually the older brother, but not the oldest. They have an older brother named Xavier. So starting with Andreas, Andreas was born in April 4th, 1997 in Colorado. They ended up living in Colorado for just a few days after Andreas was born. And then they later moved to Las Vegas, Nevada, where they also had Tony, who was born on August 19th, 1999. So growing up, they actually had a pretty rough childhood. Uh, they lived in the east side of Las Vegas, which if you don't know, is a very like crime related neighborhood. Um, a lot of like gangs and shootings and violence. And they also just didn't really grow up with much money. And also their parents like would fight all the time. We went through a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of shit growing up. Family issues. Many people can agree with that. Many people can relate with family issues, mom and dad arguing, divorce, things like that. And it's, 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 it's a reality. I'm not going to hide from it. The mental strain you go through when your parents, when you see your parents not loving each other, you don't understand the idea of love. You grow up misinterpreting what the ideal marriage or couple should be because all you see is your parents fighting despite their external circumstances the brothers remained pretty close especially tony and andreas they've been dancing since they were about 16 years old so a very very long time give you better i'll have you think about and they were actually on the dance team at their school and would do a bunch of like dance camps and dancing events competitions <laughs> And it wasn't until 2018 when Tony was 19 that he actually started a TikTok account and started to do dancing videos. Tony in the beginning just kind of started TikTok because as I said, he's been dancing since he was a child. So he really just wanted to get big into dancing and felt like TikTok might help him. And it was actually Tony who was the first one to start TikTok. And then Tony then just started to gain a lot of followers on TikTok. At this time, Andreas was actually going to college. Now, I don't really know what he was majoring or if he dropped out 
but I do know he was attending university at this time. Until one day, Tony decided to feature Andreas onto his TikTok account. And everybody was like, oh my God, we love Andreas. He has to make his own account. We love him. And then that is when Andreas decided to make his own account. Now, as far as Xavier, the older brother, no one really knew that they had like a third brother um, because since he was the oldest, he was out like getting married and having children. So he didn't really, you know, feel the need to be involved in this social media. They were getting like money from sponsorships and they were like getting big on TikTok and they were finally getting their dancing career. Things were really looking up for the both of them. Now, remember when I was saying earlier how Tony and Andreas didn't really grow up with much money? Well, prior to the Hype House even being a thing, they actually all planned to meet out in LA and like stay at an Airbnb and just get to know each other before moving into the house. Well, Andreas and Tony actually ended up not even going because they didn't have enough money to pay for the Airbnb to go there. So even while they were doing TikTok and while they had millions of followers, still struggling financially. Nonetheless, December of 2019 rolls around and that is when they finally are able to move into the Hype House and really get their dancing career started. everyone here is familiar with what the hype house is but if you don't it's basically a house that was created by thomas patro and chase hudson the same thomas patro that actually helped originate the team 10 house the hype house is comprised of 19 members this is the crew <laughs> Now I'm not gonna go in and name all of the Hype House members because let's be honest, we only know of like seven and <laughs> the rest are just background characters. When the Hype House was created, obviously a big house comprised of like teenagers and 20 year olds is not the best idea. It was literally like a frat house. They would have parties every single weekend. <laughs> Hype House tends to have a younger audience. It wasn't really that much of a surprise to learn that there were a lot of young people attending these parties, um, especially minors and underage people. And since it was a party, there was a lot of drinking and also a lot of... A lot of that was going on, but since everybody was obsessed with the Hype House, no one really batted an eye to it. And apparently this was happening a lot with Andreas and Tony. And there were actual people at the Hype House that knew about it, such as Chase and Thomas, the hosts of the Hype House, but neither of them said a single thing about it. They just kind of let them do their thing and just pretend that they never saw it, which is, which is extremely messed up to do things were going on and of course a lot of these victims didn't really want to come forward because as i said the hype house has millions and millions of followers all of the fan bases combined attacking the victim that would make the situation even worse so people just thought it would be easier if they stayed quiet at the hype house some actually stayed for a bit and then others would stay there full time so for example charlie since she was a minor which really really weird by the way so tony and andreas were like doing all these stuff with underage girls but then they were living with underage girls so it makes me think like there is no way that there wasn't one time like where they were just being extremely creepy to all of the underage girls living in the house would you know go back to their family sometimes but in reality all of their stuff was there like they lived there 2020 is probably the roller coaster that no one wanted to ride <laughs> we just rode 2020 because we were like yeah you know doesn't have a line it's not that big of a weight it doesn't look that scary and then we just rode it and then halfway on we were we were like, how do we get off? Basically, the 2020 year for Tony starts off with his nudes getting leaked. When it did get leaked, it was so like, he kind of just made it into one big joke, neglecting the entire fact that his 
audience is full of like 16 year olds that now just saw that. He even sold merch for it. Like he sold merch about it and just made a video kind of explaining the situation. My shit is trending on Pornhub, my shit is trending on Twitter, and memes were all over TikTok about my wiener. But yeah, I sent it on Instagram to a catfish account. Girls sending me stuff, I sent stuff back. And they got a hold of my shit and held it for six months and decided to put them out six months later. Very explicit nudes of himself and also him receiving from a 15 year old. I don't know why no one is talking about that. Like, obviously I'm not gonna show the clip, but like she was 15, how is no, like, I don't understand why no one thought that was weird or like didn't really say anything about it. That is such a bizarre detail. No one said anything. <laughs> because apparently we all suck. They held on to it for about six months. Then that is when they decided to release the footage to the public on the same day that he was going to be attending a meet and greet. I think people felt better about the situation because he was making a joke out of it. And so people were like, maybe it's not that bad. But then at the same time, it's like, yeah, just because people are laughing through it doesn't make it okay, you know? That was February of 2020. Now, June of 2020, this is when all of the homophobic and racist tweets- <laughs> We're now resurfacing. So the person who even like resurfaced this entire thing was actually Elijah Daniel. What's going on too with you and Tony Lopez, man? You seem to have a, a beef with him, man. I think the LAPD needs a beef with him more than I do. Oh my God. I think that's, I think that should be. Elijah Daniel decided to make a trending hashtag in order to cancel Tony and this is at the point where he decided to apologize. Everybody wasn't really phased. They were like, yeah, an influencer being racist, tell me something I don't know. Who actually came to his beloved rescue was Nikita. Now Nikita actually made a pretty good point point saying that obviously Tony is no longer homophobic like how could you think that I could ever be friends with a homophobic knowing that I'm trans and also there was a lot of rumors at this point that Tony and Nikita were dating and Tony was just kind of like going along with it and playing with the narrative and Nikita even said any other straight man would think like oh no bro that's gay and like just kind of dismiss the entire situation and kind of take offense to it but Tony didn't care. He was just super like along with the idea and he just, he didn't mind it. Now July is when things started to get a little, a little bit more heavy. Remember how I was saying earlier how underage girls would get taken advantage of by the Lopez brothers at Hype House parties, but they didn't really say anything because you know, they had such a big audience. Uh, well now since Tony was under fire because of his tweets, that is when a victim decided to come out and say her story now that she knew that Tony was kind of at his low and people already didn't like him. Tony at this point get exposed for being racist, homophobic, sexist, but now he was doing stuff with minors and Andreas was just sitting back the entire time. Like Andreas was not really doing anything. He was of course defending his brother, but other than that, like people were kind of deeming Andreas as the better sibling, kind of like chilling. Hmm. <laughs> That does not last for long, give it two months. This uh, underage girl comes out and says like, yes, this happened to me and I'm not gonna pretend like it didn't. This was actually really hard for me to accept and go through. And I think that Tony should also then like apologize to me because you know, he's such a big person. I can't really get a hold of him as easily as like someone, you know, one of his friends or something. A lot of people think that this underage girl is lying, but no, she supplies Snapchat conversations and videos to prove that it was indeed Tony saying these remarks and doing these things. Which isn't, um, his real one. Okay, so that's the private one with no little bitmoji. As you can see, it says the one he sent me, and that's our combo.
showing that it was his Snapchat sending these things and her like showing that she was only like 15 years old when all of this was going on. And he knew that she was 15 years old. He was saying really disgusting things to her. He was asking her for nudes the whole time, knowing and understanding that she was only 15 years old, but still try to push the issue and say like, oh, I can fly you out to LA and we can like meet in the hype house and you know like just even in las vegas where he's from the legal age of consent is 16. so it doesn't matter if he was in la or las vegas it would still be illegal so you can't say like oh <laughs> he doesn't know any better he kind of does. And that is when Tony decided to take to his Twitter and apologize for the entire thing. And not only did he apologize for this incident once, but he actually apologized twice. Once on Twitter and another time on uh, Instagram Live. First of all, just want to come on here and as a young man, take accountability and responsibility for my actions and know that they were wrong understand how shitty I'd feel. I've never had malicious intent ever with whatever I've done. Okay, so at this point in the video, uh, one of the victims that I'm speaking about reached out to me and actually sent me a link to a TMZ article, which was an interview with the actual minor in question. And I'll leave the screenshots up on the screen. You can pause to read them. These were the things that the victim was claiming. Uh, now, this was way before the lawsuit. This was basically just the victim coming out and saying their story. But Tony basically sp spun it around and said that he was sorry, but at the same time, his fan base was attacking this person. And so at the time, they didn't really sue. They were just kind of too scared because of all of the hate that they were getting. So he did lose a lot of followers during this time, but he's still a celebrity. He still lives in the hype house. So like it didn't really hurt him too too much he just had to apologize and then life went on so first minor comes out yes this is what happened to me this is what he did shows the proof inspires minor number two to come out too. her name is selena she's 16 years old and i'll put her at in the caption selena was invited to the hype house back in april here's a picture of the two of them together at the hype house After she visited the Hype House, things got a little bit weird with him. He DM'd her on Instagram and said, stop being 16, and then he proceeded to ask her for her Snapchat. Here's proof that the DMs are real. And there's his bitmoji on her Snapchat. For four months after she visited the Hype House, Tony pressured her to meet up with her and do things that I can't even talk about on TikTok. If you need any more proof, then I don't know what to tell third minor comes out yes this is what happened to me and what them, them both are saying happened to me four fourth one two three four minors came out and those are just the ones that came out so who knows how many more there are now he already apologized once so obviously he's not going to take the time of day to apologize three more times so instead he just doesn't say anything, puts it under the rug and prays that it goes away, which it eventually does. So July, he was exposed for the first girl. August is when the three other girls came out and Tony said nothing. September rolls around and that is when Andreas and Hannah decided to make it official that they were dating. If you watch Hannah Stocking, then you would know that like she is tall and she has made like so many comments in the past how she used to be super insecure about her height and she was always scared that like she would never find a man that accepted how like how tall she was or that like she would be taller than him but Andreas just didn't really care and I think that's why Hannah loved Andreas so much because he didn't really care about her flaws like they were just happy together and that was that now coincidentally when all of this was happening it was around the same time as I said of like Tony's multiple scandals so when this was released that Andreas and Hannah Stocking were dating it kind of in a really messed up way diverted the conversation away from Tony so people weren't really talking about Tony and his scandals anymore it was now Andreas and Hannah
Weirdly enough, Tony was just back on social media. Life just unfortunately went on after that. No one really, you know, followed up or tried to like really do anything about it because honestly, like what can you really do when you're not you know, the police. <laughs> now, I know a lot of you guys are probably thinking, wow, Andreas is probably such a golden child. He hasn't done a single thing wrong, but don't you dare get it twisted, nor forget what I said earlier about Andreas and Tony doing things with minors. It was just Tony's victims that were coming out. Well, January of 2021, pretty recently actually, not just one victim, but two victims came out saying that Andreas had done stuff to them. One of those victims being 14 years old, Hannah and Andreas actually had a house together. Like they lived together, they did everything together, they made videos and TikToks. People were really here for the relationship, but then all of a sudden this stuff comes out and obviously people are like looking to Hannah like, girl, I am so sorry. Cause it's one thing to get cheated on, but to get cheated on by a minor I actually DM'd Hannah Stocking on Instagram, showing her that yes, like, I'm sorry you had to find out this way, but Andrea's a little while ago um, did this to me and I wanna DM you first and tell you that I'm suing him for it. Andrea's isn't getting sued. A lot of people assume that he's getting sued, but no, he didn't get sued. He just got handed legal papers. And a lot of people are wondering why Andrea's only got legal papers instead of being criminally charged. And that's because the Lopez brothers were actually threatening the victims, saying things like, oh, if you criminally charge me, we have the best lawyers in California that can beat any case. Tony even said in his own words that he will fight this till the end. So it's just, it's so frustrating because these people go through like so much trauma and therapy and they are now like emotionally hurt for the rest of their lives like they have trust issues and relationship issues now for the rest of their life and these people won't even own up and now throwing their own privilege in their face saying yeah you can't touch us we're on Back to the video, oh my god. So obviously when this victim came out, a lot of like Andreas is powerful for literally no reason. Fan base started to come for the victim saying like, oh my god, you're lying, you're lying. Until she decided to post the legal papers onto her TikTok and say, no, I'm not lying. Like this is a real thing that's happening. Earlier when I was saying that the hype house parties, there was a lot of underage stuff going on. Well, this is actually one of the victims that engaged in sexual acts with Andreas, with her being only 14 at the time. I'm sorry, but this whole idea that you guys have of Andreas being the better sibling is totally fucked up and wrong. I've known about this for a while, but haven't been able to say anything because of legal reasons. But all the legal stuff is cleared up now. Andreas, baby, buckle up, because now it's your turn. I was asked to leave out names, so that's what I'm going to do. This all happened on April 4th last year, Andreas' birthday. The victim was 14. This is a video she took. When she got there, she was given alcohol. She was under the influence. On that day, Andreas brought her up to his bedroom and sexually took advantage of her. This is a document from her attorney, pause to read it. It's not just Tony that does things like this, it's his brother too. This whole situation with the both of them runs a lot deeper than anybody thinks, and there is no doubt in my mind that there are more victims that they've put through this. The second victim that came forward uh, was actually a transgender, so at the time he was female, but now he is when Andreas and Tony first moved to LA, they were really known for their dancing. What I'm referring to here, it was actually a dance crew, not a dance camp. Where they traveled around and did competitions and taught people how to dance. I'm the Prodigy Dance Crew from Las Vegas, Nevada. My name is Mari Smith and I'm 14. And the second minor was actually a part of this dance camp. Andreas had a situation back in June. The victim identified as a girl at the time, but has since come out as gender fluid. The victim and his friend were staying with the Lopez brothers for the night because they had a dance competition in Arizona the next day and they were driving together. He was sleeping on the couch and Andreas got home around 3 or 4 in the morning. Andreas woke him up and kept asking him to sleep in his room, which he kept saying no to, but would not take no for an answer. Eventually, he just said yes. They were in bed and Andreas pulled him on top of him and started kissing him without consent. And he went with it out of fear, which is absolutely understandable considering the fact that he wouldn't take no for an answer when he asked him to sleep in his room. He then forced him to touch him down there and would not stop persisting. 
the victim was 17 years old at the time, came up with the story and Andreas responded back in June. That's what this whole notes app apology was about. So this is a better look at Andreas' notes app apology. In this apology, he was using the victim's dead name, so I scribbled it out and put their current name to eliminate any further confusion. You can pause to read. Basically what he did was flip the situation and make it look like the victim gave consent, which did not happen. And what did the internet do? You ran with it. You all chose the side of Andreas and turned on him. I thought it was important to bring this back up and make y'all realize that he wasn't lying. So the victim that I'm talking about right now uh, never actually followed through with a lawsuit because the police said that what Andreas did was considered gross lewdness, even if the victim had proof. Now, obviously when Hannah found this out, it was said by their neighbors that she did indeed kick him out of the house and that they had broken up and she was posting a bunch of pictures of her crying and the only person that was really there for her was Lele Pons. Now y'all can say what you want about Lele Pons. I feel like she's just like a genuine person you know like her comedy may not be my style of comedy but that's completely fine and like you can totally see what an amazing friend Lele was for Hannah throughout this entire thing. Oh my god! <laughs> about the whole situation that your friend Hannah Stockton is going through? Oh, she's she's gonna get through it. She is amazing. E Hannah is someone that's so strong, better version of herself. And I think Hannah is someone that has seen the best of her yet. And it right. makes me emotional. Obviously, Hannah was just very, very distraught. She didn't really want to talk about it because obviously to further the case of the very first minor. So since the 14-year-old was obviously extremely terrified and traumatized from what happened to her, it was actually her friend Carla who decided to upload the following video that I'm about to show you, as well as validating her friend's story because she was only 14. And that's a very scary thing thing to go through especially when you have the entire internet saying that you're lying she's 14 and you are how old 23 yeah you know what can happen to you i do you can end up in jail i do realize that we need to talk in person and i'm bringing my daughter with me Okay. And my sister. And we need to figure this out. Okay. I'm, I'm totally okay with that. When can we meet? Um, whenever, uh, whenever it's possible. So to even further her case, she decided to post a video of her in the Lopez brothers' bedroom. You literally can't get more accurate than that. See how he was going to drag himself out of this one because obviously something this crazy is not just going to be band-aided over with an apology. Hannah ended up deleting everything she had with him, all Instagram pictures, TikTok videos, YouTube videos, everything, and just decided to have a clean slate and just start all over. Single, it's just, it's such a weird experience because it's like back in time and to just never have a relationship in my life. I would. One of the friends of the victim decided to come out on TikTok and basically explain the entire story, saying that what Andreas did was at a party that the Hype House used to have, got the minor drunk, and then that's when the whole thing happened. Pony then decides to come to uh, Andreas' defense, which kind of backfired to him because Tony did what he did best when he get into controversies and just make jokes about it. My brother is innocent. Ah, ah. Oh wait, what? Hold on, wait. I'm, I'm getting actually sued. Oh, okay, well, in that case, none of it ever happened. Apparently, the f apple doesn't fall too, too far from the tree because Tony actually ended up getting real sued. This is a article posted by TMC, which basically explains what the two minors were suing him for without specifying which minors in question we're talking about. He ended up getting actually sued. What does Tony do? Deny? In this image of me or, or something that I'm not and trying to manipulate people to think I'm some way. Don't, that's not who I am, bro. Just, that's not, that's not who I am. 
I'm not like that. I'm not what these people are trying to paint me as. I genuinely want to, want to see good in everyone. Um, and to my fans, you guys know that. Everybody knows this. He denies it. So why were you apologizing twice back in August? Was that like for fun? Like, did you did you not know what you were apologizing for? So I said back in August that there was four, but for this lawsuit, there was only two. Not only were these two minors suing Tony for, you know, the things that they did, they're actually also suing Chase and Thomas for negligence. Basically just seeing what was going on, but pretending like they didn't know or not really helping anyway. There is so much going on. I'm really, I really hope you understand. That dance camp minor that I was talking about earlier, in the beginning, his story wasn't really getting that much attention, but it wasn't until the lawsuit with Tony is the story started to get more attention. So today we learned that 24 year old Andres Lopez has a allegation and might be facing criminal charges for allegedly a 14 year old and the most common reaction I've seen to this is I thought he was a good brother or how did I not know this I'm gonna tell you why you didn't know this let's use Al for an example one of his teammates who posted a allegation a few months ago against him and notably said this we cannot continue to let these brothers manipulate 15 to 16 year olds they have a history of in Las Vegas everyone called them a liar no one believed them you can go read the comments they're pretty brutal Everyone was calling the cloud chaser a liar. James Charles, you tweeted to your millions of dollars that they were a liar. And you know, 10 allegations from minors and two charges later we're starting to realize maybe there's some credibility to what they were saying. So to answer your question, you didn't know because people don't f***ing believe victims and turn a blind eye when it's someone they like. Let me ask you this, if you had an allegation against him, would you come out with it after seeing someone get millions of threats saying that they're a liar? And then that is when Andreas just decided to completely deny the entire thing, saying that the dance camp minor was actually the initiator. So like I said, not only was Tony getting sued, it was also Chase and Thomas. Now, because of all of this craziness surrounding the Lopez brothers, Thomas actually decided to kick out the Lopez brothers. Oh, and then I was like, Tony and Andre, I yeah, can't have anything like this involved in our brand. Yeah. It's like not what we believe in. And we would never stand by any of that yeah. shit so i kicked them out and then that was the last time i heard about this and then now it's coming and now i'm dragged into it and i was just like i did my part man i was like yeah, yeah. i can't have this around yeah, what? You're, you're professional, yeah. yeah dude, but I in the video he seemed so mature and acting like it was this really serious and executive decision but when you watch the video of andreas actually leaving the hype house they're basically just treating it like one big joke we have a sad announcement <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just started too. This is my time to shine, alright? This is how it's gonna be. This is how it's gonna go down, alright? I'm just getting my own crib, alright? Because I live in a f***ing office space, alright? Dude, that's what this is. That's what this is. I got tired of it, and I want my own damn place. I'm not living in an office space any longer. I kicked them out, and then that was the last time I heard about this. They're moving out. They're getting their own place. It's gonna be sad, honestly. When we had this first discussion, like, actually very sad for me, because yeah. they became like brothers to me over quarantine. We're just like family. We always still will be. So it really makes me think that literally no one is taking this situation seriously, and everybody is just treating it like one big joke. Like, they're literally not about to get sued for every dime they have in about a month. Andreas apparently says in the video that the reason he's moving out is because he found a new place and then Thomas turns around and says no he actually got kicked out because of his brand and how it looks bad for the Hype House brand so we got two completely different stories and absolutely no one to validate either story. One of the victims of Andreas actually came out and said her story but the problem with her story and the reason why a lot of Andreas his fans were like oh my god like these people their stories never actually happen they're just looking for money is because now, in the video that i'm about to show you the person who made the video said that carla was her sister carla was not her sister carla was just a friend that brought her to the party it's not her fault that she was given alcohol it's the hype house's fault that nobody was carting these people before giving them alcohol in the first place also says at the end of the video that carla Carla tried to s traffic, which a hundred percent is not true. As I said, Carla was the friend. So if you see this video somewhere else, please correct other people as well. About the Andreas Lopez situation. The accuser attempted to s traffic her underage sister. After researching the alleged s 
football players against Andreas, there has been an individual who's identified herself as Carla, 19 years old, with the usernames here. Carla invited herself, her cousin, and her sister to the house by lying about her sister's age, as you can see here. In July 2020, she started off by exposing screenshots of her and Tony Lopez, Andreas's brother, having conversations. She posted multiple TikToks explaining that her attacks on Tony are just for fun, while pointing to the fact that this is how she makes her money, and brags about looking for her next victim's reputation to destroy. She ends this series of attacks on Tony by saying, this is a trend, y'all. I'm over it. And deep inside, I forgive him for my own mental health screenshot of Carla's cousin texting Tony about Carla's entire plan to sabotage the Lopez brothers. It really just added another reason for Andreas's fan base to be like, oh, this just proves that Andreas is innocent because these people just want his money. They're praying for his downfall. No, says he's just a file literally no one in the hype house has really said anything about it and neither have any of their friends even nikita has stayed pretty quiet throughout all of this and nikita is like their so-called best friend i'm taking out my hair because i just realized i hate it <laughs> as i said earlier it wasn't just tony in this lawsuit it was also chase and thomas they were being charged with negligence and ever since then they haven't really said anything regarding the lawsuit and i think that's mostly just for legal reasons as of right now literally right now the lawsuit is still intact honestly i don't even blame his friends for not coming to his rescue like if i found out my friend was having relations with a 14 year old i'd be like yeah <laughs> you're on your own for this one look at hannah she literally lived with him and saw him every day and she still did not know that this was going on so I don't really blame any of his friends not coming to his defense. So that's practically it for the story. I know I kind of left y'all out on a cliffhanger. And if anything new does come about while I'm editing this video, I will include it. But as of right now, the lawsuit is still intact. Like no one really knows still what's going on. I think what both of them did was extremely disgusting, especially them knowing the age and knowing that it was wrong and them continuing it anyways the nerve of Tony just to apologize twice for his actions knowing in his head that he did it and then finally when the law is involved he realizes that it's real and so he just denies the entire thing if you did something that terrible you should have expected it you should have expected things to take a legal turn and be okay with that on the subject of parole so this is kind of sidetracking from the whole Tony and Andrea sort of thing. So in my last last video, my Zoe Laverne video, I basically said how Zoe was dating a 13 year old. Well, one of you guys DM'd me and showed me that her best friend is actually also a minor as well. So Zoe is literally just surrounding herself with minors. She was not only dating a 13 year old, but her best friend that she displays on social media. But it makes sense why she's supporting Zoe so heavily through everything that she has done because she's a minor and she doesn't know any better. And Zoe is basically telling her like, no, I didn't do anything wrong. And then her like, yeah, you didn't do anything wrong. And so I think that's why um, they're like supporting each other so well. So that was just a little sidebar that I felt like I should mention. But yes, this is the end of the video. I went for like a little Y2K sort of look. I'm not sure if it looks as good as I think think it looks okay so this is the end of the video so if you don't care about me or my feelings then click off but girl I hit 20,000 subscribers. We just hit 20,000 subscribers, which is absolutely insane. I cannot believe that this is happening. Just kidding, I've been manifesting this for the past month, so I knew exactly what was coming my way. Okay, so the sun was coming in, my hair was bothering me, so I fixed both and I'm back now. 20,000 subscribers. Hold your applause. So I could applaud you. Did you guys see? that Trish, Trisha Paytas saw my last video. I was crying when I found that out. I was like, yup, <laughs> if I go tomorrow, I could be comfortable with that. I'm glad that I'm finally finding like my niche because girl, when I tell you, I have tried every single career <laughs> there has been. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed and do something that makes you happy today.